Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number three, day number three. On the blackboard, it shows here as day 3003. Three is to indicate that it's a third edition series. As I have already told you before, yesterday and the day before, that we have already solved every single math problem that appeared in the first and the second edition. And to keep the two series separate, we started numbering them as 3001. Day one was three indicates the third edition. On day one, 3001 if you like, we solve all the problems, but these problems that I'm solving in the new edition here, the third edition, as I already told you on the first day, I'm going at a, at a little bit of a fast pace. If, you, if that is too fast for you, if you don't feel comfortable, and if you feel that I'm not explaining things properly at a slower pace, and if you're interested in watching the original series, then you will see, you will find that all the problems that we solve on day, two, day 3001, you will find all of those problems from day 1 through 5. Just type in GRE Math day 1 all the way up to day 5. Yesterday we did problems that, that were done on day 6 through 11. And today we're going to do problems that was done in the original series from day 12 through 16. And those were done at a much slower pace. Here I'm going to go a little bit faster. Okay. All right. Number, we are on page number 124. We are on page number 124. We have problem number four. In problem number four, we are told that we have a car that gives us 35 miles per gallon. That gives us 35 miles miles per gallon. We are also told that the price of gasoline, price of gasoline is $2.95 cents $2 per gallon. We are going to drive. 350 miles. We are going to drive 350 miles. Question simply is what is the cost of gasoline? What's the cost of gasoline or as it is called in other parts of the world the cost of petrol given the fact that it costs $2.95 for a gallon. What exactly a gallon is you don't have to worry about that. First thing first is Price is $2.95, we're going to approximate that as $3 per gallon. $3 per gallon. We are, going, we are supposed to drive 350 miles. Let's pretend it is 330 miles. We're going to approximate 330 miles and it gives us 33 miles per gallon. 33 miles per gallon. As you can see, miles are going to drop out. 33 divided by 330 divided by 33, we're going to end up burning. 10 gallons because gallons is going to end up on the top. We're going to end up burning 10 gallons. Each gallon costs $3. So of course we're going to end up approximately $30. And what gives us liberty to be so sloppy here to approximate 333, uh, 330 as 300, or rather 350 miles as 333 miles, uh, 330 miles. And what allows us to approximate $2.95 as $3 per gallon is the fact that the answer choice is very far apart. If you look at the answer choices, they are very far apart. I think I'm beginning to do exactly what I told you I was not going to do. I'm explaining too much. It is important that you have the book in front of you. If you don't have the book in front of you, I'm going to end up doing what I just did here. I'm going to, I, I will feel the urge to explain things to you. You must have the book in front of you so you know exactly what we're dealing with. The answers are too far apart. Next one. And the next one on page number 125. 125 we are told that we have 60 beams this is problem number 5 of which we are told that 22 is 22 are white we are told that 18 of them are green we are told 11 of them, 11 of them are yellow 5 are red and 4 are purple and the question is what are the odds of choosing a, a, a bean that is neither red neither red no purple. What are the odds? What are the odds 
of choosing a, a being that is neither red nor purple. I should not have done this thing. I'm doing exactly what I neither red nor purple. So here's the, let's first find out what are the odds what are the odds of choosing something that is either red or purple. Red or purple. Red is right here. There are five of them. And the purples are four of them. Out of how many? Out of 60. So these are the odds of choosing a bean that is either red or purple. 9 out of 60. 9 out of 60. Which means which means the odds of choosing, odds of choosing something that is neither red, neither red nor purple, it's just going to be 1 minus this. Odds of choosing neither red nor purple is simply 1 minus 9 over 60. We can write our 1 as, we can write our 1 as 60 over 60. So 60 minus 9 is 51 over 60. 51 over 60. We have to work on it. Let's work on it on the top. 51 over 60. What we notice is that 51 is there by design. What we notice is that the sum of the digits, SUM sum of the digits of 51 is 5 plus 1. Since the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, 51 is divisible by 3. And of course we know 60 is divisible by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 is 1 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. And 21 is made up of 7 3. 7 3's are 21. Since we divided the top by 3, we must divide the bottom by 3. How many 3's does 6 have? 6 has 2 3's. How many 3's does 0 have? 0 has no 3's. So it's 17 over 20. And if you look at the answer choices, the answer choices are not written in fractions, they are written in decimals. So we have to convert this into a percentage and then we'll worry about a decimal. 17 over 20, let's multiply top and bottom by 5. Why 5? Because if you multiply by 5, the bottom part 20 times 5 is 100 and we'll have our percentage. We will have our percentage. How much is 17 times 5? How well do I know? Don't look at me. 17 5 times, how much is it? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? We know 10 times 5 is 50 and we know 7 times 5 is 35. 35 and 20 times 5 is 100. So it looks like it's 85 over 100 which is 85%, which of course expressed in decimal is 0.85. And that's your answer choice D. Let's move on. So that was question number 5. We move on to the next page. On page 126. On page 126. We are given, it says which of the following numbers have the product that is between negative 1 and 0. And we are given four, four quantities and our job is to indicate the product of which quantities falls between negative 1 and 0. The product has to fall between negative 1 and 0. That's what we are looking for. Okay, here's, here's, here's A, A is negative 20, there is B, B is negative 10, there is C, C is given to us as 2 raised to negative 4, 2 raised to negative 4 of course we know is simply, it can be written as 1 over 2 raised to 4, which of course is 1 16th. D, we are told, is 3 raised to negative 2, 3 raised to negative 2, which is 1 over 3 squared, which is simply 1 9. Let's, start, let's begin our process, shall we? We're going to go systematically, so we don't miss anything. We're going to go systematically. We have four quantities, A, B, C, and D. Let's put them here, A, B, C, and D. Let's worry about A times B. Well, A times B, A times B, A, we can see clearly, is a negative quantity. B, we can clearly see, is a negative quantity. Therefore, A times B, it's going to be positive. We, we cannot have positive. We're looking for product to fall between negative 1 and 0. So it's not A times B. A times C. 
a is a is negative it is going to be a negative quantity it is negative 20 it is going to be a negative quantity because it's negative 20 is a, is a negative number times a positive number negative 20 times 1 16th reduce it by 4 divide top and bottom by 4 we divide top and bottom by 4 16 is going to become 4 and 20 becomes 5 we end up with negative 5 4 which is less than negative 1 negative 5 4 is is simply negative 4 4 and a neg I'm, I'm doing so much I'm not going to do this this is too silly negative 5 4 negative 5 4 is less than negative 1 which is why uh, we in the previous series I we did we were going at a much slower pace because I was explaining every single baby steps and there is nothing wrong with it that if that's what you need if you need the baby steps if you need the explanation watch the original series day 12 through 16 so it's less than negative a times a times c does not work let's work on a times d a times d we tried a b we tried a c let's try a, a d a is negative 20 and d is 1 9 d is 1 9 and we end up with negative 20 over 9 which is also less than negative 1 as a matter of fact it's less than negative 2 it is less than negative 2 a, a times d, a times d also does not work a times d also does not work so far so far nothing has worked we're done with a let's try b we don't have to worry about b times l because we already did a times b so b times c b b times c b we know is negative 10 and c we know is 1 16th which is going to end up in negative 10 16th which is same as negative 5 8 aha negative 5 8 is going to fall between negative 1 and 0 negative 5 8 is well, it does work negative 5 8 negative negative 5 8 is less than 0 and more than negative 1 because negative 1 would have been negative 8 8 that does work b times c works let's keep that let's keep that alone we're done with b, b and c let's try b times d keep in mind b times c works b times d b again was negative 10 d is 1 9 that's not going to work we're going to end up with negative 10 9 and negative 10 9 is less than negative 1 negative 10 9 does not work negative 10 9 does not fall between negative 1 and 0 b times d does not work only thing that is left now on the, on the other last combination that we have to try is C times D. C times D. Let's do it here. C times D. C is 1 16th. C times D. C is 1 16th. And D is 1 9. No, that's. Oh, why, why are we wasting time? That is silly. That was silly. That was a bloody silly thing to do. C is a positive number. D is a positive number. D is a, C is a positive quantity. D is a positive quantity. Their product is going to be more than zero. C times D does not work. So the answer is the only product that we find that works, a product that is between negative one and zero, is B times C. B times C. Let's move on then. Let's move on then. We are on page number 126 still, and we're going to do question number two. Question number two is asking us which of the following integers are multiples of two and three? Multiples of both two and three. Not two or three, two and three. And the first quantity they give us is eight. Eight is a multiple of two, but it's not a multiple of three. The only prime factor of the only prime factor of 8 is 2. It's just 2 times 2 times 2. That doesn't work. B is 9. Again, same thing. The only prime factor of 9 is 3. 3 is the only prime factor of 9. We're looking for prime factors. C. Aha, C is going to work. C is 12, which is same as 2 times 2 times 3. It is the multiple of both 2 and 3. This is a silly question. You understand? This is a baby's question. C works. D says 18. 
and of course 18 is 2 times 3 times 3 is it is a, it is a it is a multiple of both 2 and 3 we can divide 18 by 2 and 3 see I did it again I'm explaining too much C works D works let's look at E E says 21 21 the only prime factors of 21 are 3 and 7 21 is not a multiple of 2 and finally we have F which is 36 which of course is a multiple of 2 and 3 2 times 2 times 4 4 times 2 is 4 times 3 is going to be 12 and 12 times 3 is there we go of course 36 is, a, is a 4 times 9 but the point here is that it is a multiple of both 2 and 3 so the answers are so the answers are, these are very tricky questions because you have to make sure that you mark every one of them in the in the exam because if you miss one you're not going to get any credit sometimes they give you as many as six seven eight answer choices and they ask you what are the possible answers and you have to mark all of them there might be three correct answers there might be five correct answers there might only be one correct answer so you have to pay attention and mark all of them we are on next page 127 127 deals with the concept of weighted average. Listen very carefully, okay? It deals with the concept of weighted average. We're going to do the problem that we are about to do, but if you want to get some more practice on the concept of weighted average, I'll give you one more source where you can go and watch those, uh, uh, do those. When I say watch those videos, I don't mean sit there and watch, watch the videos uh, passively. Uh, go to these videos I'm going to tell you. Uh, the idea is to listen to the problem that is on the blackboard, pause the video, solve the problem yourself first, and once you have finished doing your work, then you compare your work against the work that is being shown on the blackboard. Do you understand? I have a series on my channel, you will find a series called Basic Math. It is simply called Basic Math. That's it. Just type in Basic Math. The, let's put it here. Basic Math. The, 76, 95, 179, and 180. If you don't want to watch 179 and 180, which is fine, because they get more difficult, the higher the number, the more difficult they get, but at least watch these two, you will get some more practice with weighted average. So here's the question. It says that we have employees which belong to either department X or Y. Everybody belongs to either X or Y. We are further told that department X, department X has, we are further told that department X has more than twice, this is important to understand, more than twice as many employees. I'm not going to put, put everything on the blackboard, that we are told that each, each employee belongs to either department X or Y. They further go on to tell us that department X has more than twice as many employees as does department Y. Department X has more than twice as many employees as does department Y. But I'm not going to put the whole sentence there. We are further told that the average salary, average salary for department X is 25,000, 25,000 K. $25,000, rather $25,000, and the average for department Y is $35,000. What simply is, which of the following, which, this is the part you have to worry about, which could be, could be the overall average for the two departments combined. Which of the following could be the overall average? And when they say could be, they're going to give you several answer choices and the answer choices are answer choices are A, B, C, D, E, F and G. My God, it goes on forever. 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 34. I'm not putting the zeros there, but these are all expressed in tau. 
in thousands of dollars. Let's work on it, shall we? The key here, the trick here, is to not worry about the fact that the department Y has more than twice as many. The trick here is to start out by pretending that department Y, let's begin, this is a, let's begin, let's begin by assuming, by assuming that Y has exactly twice as many. Even though, or rather, Department X has, Department X, that X has exactly twice as many employees as does, as does Y. Even though, in the problem, they clearly tell us that Department X has more than twice as many. But more than twice as many, how many more? Three times as many? Five times as many? Seventeen times as many? We don't know. So let's just pretend that it has exactly twice as many and that will be our starting point and let's see what happens. If that's the case, if that's the case, then we're going to do the calculations. Let's pretend that Department X has two people and Department Y has one person. If Department X has two people and since the overall average is 25, since the overall average since the overall average is 25,000 for department X, so now we're calculating the overall average. Since department X we are pretending has two people and their average is 25, together the two people in department X together must earn $50,000. Maybe one guy earns 1,000, the other guy earns 49,000, or maybe one guy earns 10,000, the other guy earns 40,000. But their average is 25 and there are two of them, which means total, total salary of the two people is $50,000. Department Y pretending only has one person, because three exactly twice as many. Let's begin by assuming that X has exactly twice as many. In which case, Y would have to be just one person who makes 35,000. We have three people all together, actually 35,000 times 1, or 1 times 35. How many people do we have? We have three people. These are the number of people. Department, department X has two people, and Department Y has one person. We have three people all together. Let's find out what that works out to be. 2 times 25 is 50, plus 35, over 3. 50 plus 35 is 85. We're looking at 85 over 3. We divide 85 by 3. How many 3's does 8 have? 8 has only 2 3's. 2 3's are 6. 2 3's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 5, so it becomes a 25. And 25 has 8 3's. 8 3's are 24. We have a remainder of 1. That remainder of 1 must be divided by 3. Overall average is 28 and 1 third. And if you did not like this division that I just did here, let's, we can do it with a long hand. I didn't want to do it, but if you insist, we can do this division the babyish way. We are dividing 28 by 3. Let's begin. Or rather, 85. We are dividing 85 by 3. Let's begin. How many 3's does 8 have? How many 3's does 8 have? 8 has 2 3's. 2 3's are 6. 8 has 2 3's. After we take away... 6, 8, 2, 3 is a 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 5. It goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 25. And 25 has 8 3s. 8 3s are 24. We have a remainder of 1. That remainder of 1 must be divided by 3. The overall average is going to be 28 and one third thousand dollars if there are exactly twice as many people in X as there are in Y. Listen very carefully. But, but given the fact that there are more than twice as this is the punchline, this is the last part that's the most important part. Given the fact that, are, we, that we are told that there are in fact more than twice as many people in X as there are in Y, and given the fact that the average for department X is lower than the average for department Y, the average for department X is only 25,000. Average for department Y we were told was 35,000. So what's going on? If it has more than twice as many people, each person that you add to department X, it pulls the overall average down. It's pulling the overall average down. So the overall average would have been 28 and one third 
if department X had exactly twice as many people. But given the fact that it, that it, it, is in, it does in fact have more than twice as many uh, people, the overall average, whatever it is, cannot be, cannot be more than 28 and one third. Cannot be more than 28 and one third. The overall average cannot be 29, 30, or 31, or 32, or 35. It can be 26 or 28. Those are the two answer choices that are possible. Do you understand? That's it. As far as the question is concerned, we are done. I'm going to give you a question to work on on your own. Here is an interesting question. Here is the interesting question. The question here is, the question that I want you to ponder, the question that I want you to uh, work out is, let's ask ourselves now, let's ask ourselves, what does, what does the exact ratio, exact ratio, what does the exact ratio needs to be of the number of people number of number of people number of employees in department X to department Y in order for the overall average to be, and this I should not have been capitalized, in order to be, it has two part question, A, what does the exact ratio have to be? We know, we know that department X has twice as many people as this department Y, in which case the overall average has to be less than 28 and one third. Question now is, what does the exact ratio needs to be, and we establish in that case the answer can be either A or B. What does the exact, what does the exact ratio needs to be of the number of people in department X to department Y in order for overall ratio to be A, $26,000 or B, $28,000. I want you to work on that on your own, and once you have worked on it, once you have the answer, once you have the answer, just type in, just type in GRE math, J15. That's your first part of the homework. I'll give you a second homework. In the second homework, here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do. I need the room, so I'm going to raise everything. Here's the new problem. This is a brand new question. It's not in the book. So again, each person belongs to either X or Y. That has not changed. Now, Department X, Department X has more than, more than twice as many people. Twice as many. We also told that average for X is. $15,000. We are told that average for Y is $25,000. Question is, what could be the overall average? What could be the overall average? And the answer choices are A, B, C, 17,000, 18,000, D, E, F, G, 19,000, 20,000, 21,000, 22,000. These are all expressed in, in thousands of dollars. You understand? So, if there is a situation where each employee belongs to either department X or Y, there are no other departments, we are further told that department X now has not twice as many, but more than twice as many. Not more than, not more than twice as many. In this problem, there are more than twice as many people Department X has more than twice as, twice as many employees as does Department Y. The average for Department X is $15,000, the average for Department Y is $25,000. Given those facts, what could be the overall average for the two departments? And here are the answer choices, and your job is to pick all the ones that apply. And once you have found the answer, then ask yourself, 
Well, ask yourself, in order for those answers to be correct, what needs to be, what needs to be the exact ratios? That's your homework. And once you have solved that war problem, once you solve it, once you have the answer, then watch this video, GRE Math, day 16. I'm not going to redo all of that again because it was a lot of work. In day 16, you will find the answer to this question. On day number 15, you will find the answer to the previous question. The question being, the book does not ask you for that. book simply tells you what the exact ratios are. They simply casually tell you in one sentence that the exact ratio needs to be such and such. Somewhere they tell you, ah, right here at the very bottom of the page, I'm on page 127, at the very bottom, at the very bottom in the last two sentences, they tell you that the to see that 26,000 is possible, I'm reading it verbatim, it says to, six, to see that the 26,000 is possible, the weighted average above needs to be 9 to 1. And, oh, I just gave away the answer, didn't I? Because it's in the book. And the other case, for the other answer choice, it has to be 2 to 1. But for this one, there is no answer in the book because it's not in the book. So the only way you will find out whether or not you did the right work is actually do the work yourself and then match your uh, compare your work against the work that we did on day number 16. That was it for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.